so tough at the moment on top of usual household duties, particularly for parents. For the last 11 months, a lot of parents have been, of course, educating children, homeschooling. And then on top of that, working remotely and keeping everyone safe. So it's no wonder that most of us are feeling the strain of lockdown. Yeah, according to a survey for GMB, almost half of parents are feeling burnt out and around two thirds say this lockdown has been more emotionally difficult than the previous one. Tom Barton spoke to three parents about how they were dealing with the lockdown. How close do you think you've come to burning out? I'm at this edge of this cliff and it's just a matter of just like one little push and then it's like over. I've, I've got as close as I've ever come. The whole perfect storm of um, just you, the pressure at work, the pressure at home. I could really do with them going back on March 8th, if that's all right. <laughs> Honestly, really would love the schools to open. But at the same time, I'm still a bit on edge about the virus. Have you found that it's a lot harder to keep your house as tidy? Yeah, you're in the cleanest hat room in the house. It's the only one I can keep clean. It's just a constant <laughs> battle cleaning. This is the only angle I could get that yeah. doesn't... Yes, if you can see what's around this computer. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Well, look, with no clear route out of lockdown yet, uh, there's going to be more of that, isn't there? So what could be done to address the hidden crisis facing parents? Joining us now is child psychologist Laverne Antrobus, who has three children in their 20s, along with school governor and co-founder of the Black Mums Upfront podcast, Karina White, who has an 11-year-old daughter. And from Leeds, we have our GP, Dr Amir Khan. Good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, this morning. Um, Laverne, if we can start with you. I mean, you just had a little snapshot of three of the parents that we had surveyed for our GMB survey, and you can see how on the edge people are feeling at the moment. And then we're hearing more reports this morning that actually lock lockdown might not be lifted, as we're all hoping, by the summer, but could be going all the way through to autumn. It just feels like it's compounding that feeling that we're never going to get out of this. Mm. Absolutely. And, and I really feel for those parents, well, all parents, you know, even though we've been here for quite a long time, I think it's the just the incessant nature of the ongoing struggle of juggling so many plates. But what I would say is that we have been here a while and maybe parents are beginning to work out which battles are worth fighting and which ones are worth letting go, particularly around homeschooling. I suppose the biggest thing is to recognise it is half term. We are coming up to the break. And most half terms, people are sort of limping over the line. So that sort of sense of burnout and feeling really tired is probably one that, you know, would have been there anyway. But the added layer of the pandemic really means that this is a reset time for parents, you know, to try and just five, five or ten minutes to look after themselves so that they feel ready for the next push. I think one of the things that we've struggled with, and I know that my boys are struggling with, and Annie and I, and I've been lucky because I've been able to come into work and I've been able to see my colleagues and have seen the different four walls, but it's the lack of contact with other people. And when you're a parent, it's important for the children to see other children, of course, mm -hmm. but equally it's important for parents to be able to let off a bit of steam with other parents to understand that they're going through the same issues. Absolutely. I think you know, the pandemic has really reminded us that we're social beings. And the sort of ordinariness of bumping into each other at the school gates, you know, seeing our colleagues, just having that sort of sense of having people around means that the isolation that I think lots of parents are feeling is really quite real. You know, the, the, the sort of slog of going through the school day, juggling work, you know, keeping things going in the house. You heard those parents say, you know, this is the one spot I found today where it doesn't look like chaos. Well, actually, I think this is the time to recognise that as we go through this next push, some of those things we just might need to let go. There's always tomorrow to recover. But I think this is for resetting, looking after oneself and getting through a half term and getting back, sitting on the sofa with your children and just trying to have some downtime. Uh, well, along with school governor, being a school governor, Karina, as we said at the beginning, is also a mum. I wonder if there's a battle that you have going on in your head all the time between the school governor and the mum uh, and trying to, you know, do both. We've heard from teachers this morning say how hard it is to be teaching and also homeschooling. How, how do you manage the two heads, the two hats you wear? <laughs> Well, yeah, alongside being a school governor, I work within advertising and marketing as well. So my role is quite demanding. But actually, my, my employers have been really supportive of the fact that, you know, we, we're not in a normal situation. We have the kids at home all day, every day, whilst we're also homeschooling. 
So having that support from my work has actually been really, really amazing. Even just small things like I have in my email signature, um, the times that I'm unavailable due to homeschooling. And that just sets expectations and takes off that additional pressure that, oh, my God, people are chasing me to have a reply to an email to get something done. So just having that support from employers has actually been really, really helpful. And also, I can't stress enough how supportive my daughter's school has been as well. And understanding that, you know, there are parents that are trying to juggle working from home along with other commitments, as well as trying to, you know, support their children. So I think it's just been really useful for me having those extra bits of support from work and from my daughter's school. It's fantastic if you can have that. Not everybody does, of course, but it is fantastic if you can. And I wonder if it's all about expectations. I seem to remember that that initially, especially last summer when uh, the weather was so good, people thought, this is time with yeah. the family. You know, I'm going to teach myself Mandarin. I'm going Learn to, to you know, I'm going to have uh, renovate the home and have it the cleanest ever. And then we all realised that, of course, it, it's not possible. It's not that simple and lower our expectations. And just if things have to go, they have to go. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, for me, it's if the house is a mess, I've learned that, OK, the house is a mess. Let me just go to sleep and I'll sort it out in the morning. I think for a lot of parents, you know, we have that mum guilt, that dad guilt that we're not spending enough time with our children or, you know, there's all of these things that are done that aren't done in the house. As well as, you know, society telling us, like you said, finish that project, learn a new language, do this, do that. It's about not putting that pressure on yourself. You know, don't don't overdo it. If something doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. If you don't homeschool for one day your kids aren't going to fail school for the rest of the year you know just take that pressure off and if things don't get done if you're not able to do something it's fine tomorrow's a new day uh, let's speak to dr amir because of course amir i'd imagine that you're getting quite a lot of uh parents coming to you saying i'm really struggling i really can't cope there's so much going on how on earth can i juggle all those commitments that i have um and often it is the sort of the mental health services mm. that get come last on a list of priorities isn't it yeah, it, it has been, uh, you know, I'm getting frequent calls like that. Uh, people who, who go from parental burnout, but actually then go on to have significant mental health problems as a, as a result. There'll be people watching this right now who'll be thinking, oh, it's just being a parent, get on with it. But no, that's not, not true. You know, there's an age old saying uh, that says um, it takes a village mm -hmm. to raise a child. And that is true. Parents are used to having teachers, grandparents, families, friends help them with raising that. The, the, their children, and that's all been taken away from them. They're now having to juggle the roles of parenting, teaching, working from home, being their kid's best friend, confidant, all of that. Yeah. It's so, so hard. Uh, and there are signs to look out for. Uh, so if you're tired more than your usual level of tiredness as a result of all of this, if you're feeling emotionally detached from your children, if you're not looking forward to spending time with your children, if you're feeling hopeless, those are things uh, that, that should worry you. And that's when you should think about talking to someone. It could be a family member or a friend, or if you're really worried, you can speak to your GP and we are there uh, to, to speak to you and we can talk to you about what options are available. Might it be a support group? Could it be talking therapy for you? Uh, and then we can decide together whether medication might help. And we've got to take the stigma away from that. Asking for help isn't a sign of weakness. If anything, it's a sign of strength. Yeah. Yeah. If the help is out there. Don't think it's not. It's good advice, isn't it? Uh, even if you have to push a bit to get it. Good to speak to all three of you. You all look very groomed, very calm, I'm very, very organised, ready, ready for another day of <laughs> lockdown. So you're a, a shining example. It may just be that that shot is the one shot in their houses <laughs> yes, that everything exactly. is looking perfect and pristine. <laughs> uh, we'll hold that, dear. Thank you all very much for joining us this morning.